Before we start, I would just like to tell you, a, a lot of work has been put in to organize this special session for you all, technical session, and they have been working very hard for many months for this style of things. Can you give it a big hand for working so hard, please? Congrats to them. Because they always think that it's very easy to give this style of talk. And professors always, they think it's all right. I have a, a driver or a chauffeur, whatever you, the destination for him. He used to follow me around. And uh, if you don't remember anything of this talk, you remember this, it might be helpful to you. In the sense that he has been listening to my talk and he said, after a while, looks very easy. I can deliver the talk myself, he says. And I said, one day I said, okay, you go ahead and deliver your talk. I'll wear your driver's uniform and sit behind. So he did an excellent job, very smart. He gave the good talk on the technical subject that I used to present. And until a certain session came over, what's the most difficult session you think in a presentation? It's the Q&A section, which is the question and answers. And when somebody asks him a question he hasn't heard before, there was silence in the room like you are now. How is he going to answer the question? And I was sitting behind in the driver's uniform, sweating away. And then suddenly he smiled. And what do you think he said to the audience? Very simple question. My driver also can answer it. <laughs> is it that is what I want you all to think about. That is how we innovate, fascinate you all. So while we are in it, we progress to the next part, which is what we will be talking about, which is the strategic uh, mineral development. When you talk about the mineral industry, most of us are not very sure what it is. But look at this, Petronas Twin Towers, still the tallest twin tower building in the world. How has it come about? Have you thought about it? Can we be built from what type of materials? It is built from cement. It is built from steel. And it uses more cement than the tallest building in the world. You should be proud of it. Malaysia has done it. Congratulations, because of the mineral industry. So we built this thanks to the mineral industry, cement and the foundation goes down one kilometer. You should be excited because without this type of minerals, there won't be any Twin Tower. Now everybody knows Twin Tower, everybody knows Kuala Lumpur, everybody knows Malaysia, thanks to you all, to the industry. But for the rest of you all, you'll be interested in this small section. Why? Because when Dato Esma and myself, when we got married, Earlier, as you said, we're always young. <laughs> the price of gold, have you thought about it? One gram of gold is only about 30, 40 ringgit at that time. What do you think is the price of gold now? Have you thought about it? Roughly, for those who are going to get pernikahan, going to get married, you should be worried. It costs about 200 ringgit a gram, a ring. It's about, I found out from uh, Dr. Siti just now, it's about five grand. So last time, we would pay about five times four, 200 ringgit. Now you will be paying about 1,000 over ringgit just for the ring, the chin chin. Can you imagine if you want to buy, the wife wants to buy bangles, necklace, I think for the, the, our male counterpart, start saving now. It's going to be a very expensive experience. But this is the mineral industry. If you all can see that, there are diamonds, there's pewter, tin, precious stones. All of you have beautiful houses, dimension stones. All that are from the mineral industry. So the Academy of Science is very, very interested now. And we have come a long way. Why? Look at what is coming next. Malaysia has 732 billion worth of minerals in the ground. 
waiting to be developed. That is the opportunity for you all. Every one of you in this room should be excited that Malaysia has that. Where does Kuala Lumpur come from? You have seen the beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur and all the cities, your beautiful houses. It all comes from the mineral industry, which is from the ground, we extract the minerals, we come up with cement, and then you have your beautiful cities. You all should be very proud because Malaysia has a lot of minerals. We have two types of uh, mineral development programs. One is on surface, which is on top of the ground, and one is underground. That is the technology open for you all today. So no problem in whatever ways you want to develop the industry. And the size of the industry, you can have a look at it. This is how big the project is. If you look at that little corner, that is the size of a lorry. And you know how big the size of a lorry is. It's already big. But look at the size of this thing. This is a copper mine. And for those of you who are very conscious in aerobics, exercise, all you have to do is walk from the top down to the bottom. By the time you go home, no need more exercise. You'll be fit and nice and healthy. That is what the excitement if you work in this industry. And Malaysia is very, I would say, endowed with it. You all should be proud. Our mineral industry, the exports are going up, 70 billion and so on, ringgit, and it's still increasing because there's always a demand for minerals. No problem for you all. So what are we going to talk today? We are talking about mineral development. We'll start with what are the achievements of the industry, the products from it. You saw already Twin Towers. What else is there? Then after that, we'll talk about Industry 4.0, which everybody is excited about. All of you are in this room, the young generation, I'm very happy with you all because this is the generation for you all. And then, of course, what's the future of mineral development? Where do we go from there? World-class achievements. All the achievements, the mineral industry is not localized to Malaysia. If you are in the career in the mineral industry, you can go anywhere around the world. That is whatever has been uh, the knowledge in Malaysia is the same as in UK, Australia, Canada. That's the beauty of this technology. The earliest evidence when they built the first uh, building was about thousands of years ago in Iraq area, near Syria, Jordan area. And they were the first to do that. And that is where the minerals was first used. After that, we came with the North-South Highway. You should be proud because of all that, 20% of the North-South Highway uses concrete and the other 70% use asphalt. All of those are from the mineral industry. And without this uh, innovation, without this highway, we won't be traveling. I came all the way down from Penang, even though I had a conference on Sunday, just to support you all. And I'm very impressed to see you all in this room. That is why you all should be excited. You should be fascinated by all these things. Palm Jamaira in Dubai, they built an island straight from all the minerals in the sea. And all the materials are taken from the United Arab Emirates. No problem in that. That is the technology they have now. That is the achievement. And of course, we have the Bush Khalifa the tallest building in the world, and it's all built from cement. And as we said just now, the Twin Towers uses more cement than the Bush Khalifa. You should be proud of it. And it's standing. That's more important. Yeah. And all the other uh, structures, like across the sea, even bridges that have uh, aesthetic views, all made from the mineral industry. So after that, you said, ah, we have got so many nice structures around the world. Where does Industry 4.0 play this role? A lot of people look at Industry 4.0 and get excited. But what we want to know, because I just finished a conference with the industry, 
what to do. Uh, that is what you all are here for. Industry 4.0, you all know all the pillars, uh, augmented reality, all the nine pillars, no problem. Everybody is very conversant in that. Question, what do we do with it? One, important. Industry always says, costs and benefits. The benefits must outweigh the cost, the investment. Two, we want, is, we want to know where does Industry 4.0 start. In 4.0, starts in smart mineral development. You should be able to develop using drones uh, and doing planning, everything by using sensors. Think about it. You don't have to go and do records. You don't have to work in the hot sun too much. Everything can be done automatically. Two, drones. You, can you imagine? If you are doing two hectares survey, you can do it now in six minutes. And if you are doing a few weeks' work, now you can do in hours. That is the technology. So this is the technology for you all. When you're using drones, you can even use your tablet now. Control the drones. And that is what you all should be excited about. The technology is waiting for you all. Driverless. Imagine a lot of people think, ah, am I going to be a driver? How am I going to control the transport industry? Not to worry. Now you can sit in KL or in uh, Putrajaya and co control all these trucks automatically, driverless. The technology will be there for you all. That's what I want to envisage for you all. You should be getting excited about it. Safety. People are worried about working near trucks. Now we have sensors around the trucks that can tell you whether there's a worker nearby or you are driving in a dangerous zone. That is what you should be excited about. The next one is you can do your way bridge and you can also look at the costs involved. You can optimize the cost area. Our fellow colleague from the chairman of the Inda Water, if you can optimize your cost from a distance, lower energy cost, that will be a benefit to your industry. Similar, whatever industry you are, use the technology. What's the future now? Where do we go from here? That is why you all are here in this room. After listening to all these things, where do we go from there? We want to connect. So this is Industry 4.0. All the process that you are doing in the field, it can be connected. Uh, operator will be working there, seeing all the data. And all the data will be connected by satellite to the control room. And top management can straight away make decisions. Would be nice if uh, in the water chairman or even the CEO of a company, even in ASM, you can see all your projects progressing, whether in Sabah, Sarawak, Pahang, in your office. And then straight away you can make decisions, can we proceed this way? Where's the response? That's what we want. So basically we want rapid management decision making. That is what the industry wants. They want all the information coming in from the site, all comes in, computerized, and then analyze so that the top management, the CEO, and the general managers, and also the, even the universities, the vice chancellors, can still straight away say, that's a good project. Let's progress it. That's what I want you all to feel excited about. Of course, supply chain management, that's another thing. If somebody wants to buy a product, they want so much aggregate, they want so much gold, so much tin, who wants it, who wants to buy it, you produce it based on the needs of the industry. That's what we want. That's supply chain. Of course, equipment maintenance. A lot of us service our cars, our motors, our equipment. Why not having sensors that tell you this is the time to change the thing and then we change it accordingly. So that you save costs on maintenance 
and the spare parts will come in straight on time. That is what the industry wants now. Can you deliver? Can the young generation, you all sitting in this room, can you deliver that? If you can, that's a job for you all. Information logging. Our environmental minister will be very happy to see this because whenever we are doing the drilling or what, all the data will be collected. You can know when the contaminated sites, how much contamination is, and where do we go from there. So conclusion, the way, where we go forward. Are we 4.0 ready? That's the aim in this room. One is, if you want to look at it, 25% of all the jobs present in industry are going to change very soon. So please, uh, what we are saying is, we cannot wait, we better be prepared for it. What are the subjects you can use? For those in academia and in industry, you need things like analytics, operations research, digital process, business economics, all these type of topics. That is what the industry wants. If you can supply them, then you are on track. The other things are large data analysis, supply network technology, and all those things. So what we want? We want to see administration improve 70%, uh, cost go down. So efficiency all goes up, but the cost go down. That is industry 4.0. So case study, for example, the Royal Tinto, the biggest company for minerals in the world, they put sensors and they save two million. So every day they save two million dollars compared to not using it. So what have we done today? We have seen what are the achievements of the industry. We see how industry 4.0 and of course the future. And this is to show you the benefits of the industry. After you're finished, you don't have to be worried. The environment place. The whole thing has been changed from a mineral industrial site into a garden. And this is the Bouchard Gardens in Canada. And they have done it, and tourists go there, and it's a success story. And for that, I would like to say thank you very much. You have been an excellent audience. Thank you.